Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord whom we serve. Amen. Well, friends, I trust that you are happy in Jesus. I trust that you are thrilled to be in the family of God. And I encourage you to turn your attention from the things, the ways, the practices of this world, and to look unto the God whom you serve and find victory in that very thought. Now we're continuing our look into the book of Job, and today we find ourselves in chapter 12. Now Job is going to reply to what Zophar has just said, and recalling what Bildad and Eliphaz has said as well, and he's going to begin to sum up his thoughts in a litany of wisdom teachings throughout the next three chapters. But we want to focus today on chapter 12. Now verse 1 says, Job answered and said, No doubt you are the people and wisdom shall die with you. Now, Job is being a little bit sarcastic here because he's saying, what makes you think that you're better than anyone else? You see, the message that we often communicate of truth, we have to be very careful in how we deliver it because if we speak down to people, they're not going to receive it as they should. And that's what's taking place here. Job's three friends are speaking down to him. And so Job basically says, enough. Who do you think you are? Why do you think that wisdom will die with you? Why do you think that you alone have the understanding? He says in verse 3, I have understanding as well as you. I'm not inferior to you. Who knoweth not such things as these? In other words, <clears throat> I am an old man. You, my three friends, are old men. And he reminds them in verse 12, that with the ancient or with the old is wisdom. Why? Because they've walked the path of life. They've become victim of many mistakes and have learned from those mistakes or should have learned from those mistakes. And he's basically saying that with the old comes wisdom because the experiences, both good and bad, have taught that man. And in length of days, understanding. You see, you can't expect wisdom from a six-year-old, an eight-year-old, a 12-year-old like you would that of a 50, 60, 70-year-old man. And that's what Job is saying. Back to verse three. He says, who knows such things as these? Don't we all? Haven't we all learned the same truths of life? Yet I am one is mocked by his neighbor who calls upon God and he answers him. The just upright man is laughed to scorn. He that is ready to slip with his feet is as a lamp despised in the thought of him that is at ease. Now, what Job means here is he's saying, look, you're scorning me and you're mocking me. But you must remember, one who falls in his obedience or slips at feet is like a lamp that is burning uncontrolled. If a lamp were to fall off the desk, and the flame were to become exposed to the things around it, it would consume and destroy everything around it. And that's what Job is saying. He's saying, look, if I have fallen like you state that I have fallen, everything around me would be consumed. Now, it appears to Job's friends that everything around him is being consumed. But Job is speaking more from his heart. You see, his faith is still in the God whom he serves. His trust is still in the God whom he serves. His allegiance is still unto the God whom he serves. He hasn't fallen in his faith, in his allegiance, which, remember, is what the test is all about, to make Job curse God to his face. But Job is nowhere near that point. And so Job is basically saying, though that it would appear that all around me has been destroyed, I stand strong in the name of the Lord of the hosts of Israel. He continues by saying, look, I understand that God blesses the righteous and the unrighteous. I understand that God exalts the righteous and the unrighteous. I understand that God brings down the righteous and the unrighteous. Even nature teaches us this. And that's what he means in verses six through nine. The tabernacles of robbers 
prosper. And they that provoke God are secure. You would think they would be insecure. You would think that robbers would be unprosperous. But he says, the tabernacles of robbers prosper, and they that provoke God are secure, into whose hand God bringeth abundantly. Now, he's not questioning why God blesses the unrighteous. He's simply acknowledging that he does. But he says in verse 7, ask the beast, and they'll teach thee. Ask the fowls of the air, and they will teach thee. Or speak to the earth, and it will teach thee. And the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee. Who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this? In other words, God is sovereign, and he can do as he pleases. And if it's his desire to place an unrighteous king over a nation or a righteous king over a nation, his purpose is indeed true and not to be questioned. He says in verse 13, with God is wisdom and strength. He has counsel and understanding. He is sovereign God, and he has the right to do as he chooses. Now, at this point, I want to turn again to the Message Bible, and I want to read you what the Message Bible says in the remaining verses of the chapter. It says, true wisdom, beginning in verse 13, and real power belong to God. From him, we learn how to live and also what to live for. If he tears something down, it's down for good. If he locks something up, it's locked up for good. If he holds back the rain, there's a drought. If he lets it loose, there's a flood. Strength and success belong to God. Both deceived and deceiver must answer to him. He strips experts of their vaunted credentials. He exposes judges as witless fools. He divests kings of their royal garments, then ties a rag around their waists. He strips priests of their robes, and he fires high officials from their jobs. He forces trusted sages to keep silence. He deprives elders of their good sense and wisdom. He dumps contempt on famous people. He disarms the strong and mighty. He shines a spotlight in the caves of darkness he hauls deepest darkness into the noonday sun and exposes it. He makes nations rise and he makes nations fall. He builds up some and he abandons others. He robs world leaders of their reason and sends them off into no man's land. They grope in the dark without a clue, lurching and staggering like drunks. So basically Job is saying, look, God is God and he can do what he so chooses. But regardless of what he chooses, he is my God and I will remain faithful to him. Now, Job is saying this because obviously the reason that his friends are speaking to him is that they are presenting an argument that they expect to win. And so they expect Job to conform, admit his wrong, and ultimately admit that they are right. But Job is standing his ground and saying no. I don't understand why this has come upon me, but I know in my heart of hearts that I am clean before the Lord. I've done nothing to bring his judgment, yet he is God. And as we are told in the next chapter that we'll look at tomorrow in verse 15, he says, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. What a profound statement for Job to make. Though he slay me, I will trust in him. May we both learn from and share in the faith that Job has unto his God. He finishes that verse by saying, I will maintain my own ways before him. In other words, I will remain faithful regardless of the circumstances of this life. Oh, dear friends, there is much that we can learn from this man, Job. And I pray that our faith is being fortified as we read his story, and learn from his example. Well, we're going to close there today. I'm so thankful that you're again with us. I pray that your journey will be blessed today. And I pray that you'll look at the mistakes of yesterday, that you'll put those things behind you. You'll set your sight on the goal of heaven, and you'll strive to be the man and woman that the Lord Jesus has called you to be. Now, as he wills, and until tomorrow, friends, I'll see you on the next video.